Welcome to Salt Lake City, Utah. With energy prices rising and supplies dwindling and pollution and global warming only getting worse, I finally decided this year to power my new home with alternative energy. Now, there are lots of choices out there, but fortunately, this one was easy. Utah has on average every year 125 sunny days and 101 partly sunny days. That means at least part of the day, the sun is out nearly two thirds of the year, making it one of the sunniest parts of the country. So after choosing solar power, my choices then became, one, who was going to build it, two, how much power did I need, three, where was I going to put it, and four, how the heck was I going to get it there? That's what this story is all about. First, I had to find a company to build it. I went online and made a few phone calls. I found there aren't a lot of firms in Utah building solar power systems, and our project was going to be particularly challenging. But one firm stood out. In Hot Water, Heat, and Power of Eden, Utah. They did a site survey, went over the details, and about a month later, I began my adventure into this brave new world, with an emphasis on brave. Our courageous crew rode up appropriately in a white pickup truck. The Knights of Grass Plus Landscaping, led by, I'm not making this up, Richard Lyon. But why is a landscaping company helping to build a solar power system? Because it's being built in the Valley of Death, a 40-foot deep ravine with a steep slope leading to a rock-hard, uneven plot among trees and power lines. It's a fun little, almost vertical trip from here, 45 degrees at least. <laughs> it's a rocky mess. But King Richard and his knights knew the challenge this project presents. Ten 200-watt photovoltaic cell panels mounted atop a 15-foot steel pole, like in this picture. The panels are connected to a solar-powered tractor device. The panels follow the sun as its position changes, maximizing the power production. Large structures like this are usually restricted to business parks and rural areas. But our ravine was a rare and perfect urban location, blocked from wind, too low and surrounded by trees to obstruct neighbors' views, and most importantly, a broad and continuous exposure to the southern and western skies where the sun's rays are most powerful. Richard's job was to erect the pole and lay the conduit between the solar panels and the house. He's done a lot of jobs, but he knew this one would be different, difficult, and even dangerous. Where does this rate with the ones you've done? <laughs> difficult and skill. Is it 10? I'd give this a good 12 or 13. No equipment, just some good guys. Adding to the danger was a snowstorm that morning, making the steep and rocky terrain more treacherous. Even getting the building materials to the site would be a challenge. 40 bags of concrete mix weighing 80 pounds each. Shovels, picks, and other tools, and the star of the show, the steel mounting pole, 600 pounds, 21 feet long. Like threading a needle, it took all six workers to slip the pole through the slick, narrow stairway alongside the house. After getting the pole to the edge of the ravine, it was time to lay the groundwork. Pull it up to there. 